I wanted to return now to question two from the first exam. In the first exam on question two, I told you in the question setup um, that with a single action potential from the axons from the visual cortex in the parietal lobe, these our schizophrenia-like mice have larger responses than control mice. Um, I suppose it could be you know, larger or smaller, kind of doesn't matter. Um, we'll, let's actually, to keep things consistent with other things we've already talked about, we'll say, um, we'll, we'll look at another example here where there's a smaller response. So, you know, substitute in whatever disease you want. Um, in, major, in our mice with major depressive disorder, um, we have mild type, wild type mice without depressive disorder. Um, and in their amygdala, there's a two millivolt response. And then in a mutant mouse that we think does have depression, there's a one millivolt response in, uh, in its amygdala. <coughs> so when we stimulate the input, we get a smaller response. That tells us that it's weaker. It doesn't tell us why. So in question two, we wanted to figure out why. Why is it weaker? There are two possibilities, or why is it stronger? In either case, there are two possibilities why it might be changed. Different amount of neurotransmitter, in the case of something weaker, less neurotransmitter, or a different amount of receptors. In the case of something weaker, that would mean fewer receptors. So how do we figure that out? Um, in principle, we could measure the number of receptors, and there are ways to do that, but we haven't talked about them yet, so unless you explicitly explain how you would do that using methods we haven't discussed, you're not going to get full credit. Um, the method that we have discussed that does work for this is to look at what is called paired pulse ratios, or just instead of stimulating our input once, we stimulate it twice, maybe 50 milliseconds apart. And so that double stimulus is what we call paired pulse. Two action potentials, 50 milliseconds apart. So our first stimulus we already know is going to give us a two millivolt response in the wild type animal. And sure enough, that's what we see. Then 50 milliseconds later, we get a second stimulus. And let's say it gives us a three millivolt response. So then we calculate the ratio of the second pulse divided by the first. That is 3 millivolts divided by 2 millivolts, or 1.5. The units, millivolts, cancel out, and so we've got a ratio of 1.5. In our mutant, our first stimulus, we already know, is going to give us a 1 millivolt response. Sure enough, that's what we get. The second stimulus, maybe it gives us a 1.5 millivolt response. So now we calculate our ratio. Again, the, the millivolts unit cancels out, and so our ratio is 1.5. So, so far we've got a number for the wild type, the ratio of second to the divide by first for the wild type, and a number for the mutant. We need to be explicit that we are going to compare our, so we've measured the ratio in wild type and we've measured the ratio in the mutant. We need to explicitly say now we're going to compare those ratios with each other. We're not compare, we're not just comparing the first pulse to the second. We're actually comparing the ratio of second to first in wild type versus the ratio in mutant. So we're comparing the wild type ratio versus the mutant ratio. In this case, the example I've given, these ratios are the same. And then you should return back to some of the Unit 1 videos to understand why the same ratio means that there is no change in the amount of neurotransmitter being released. So back here to our possibilities, synapse is weaker. The ratio didn't change with two pulses, so we can cross off this less neurotransmitter release. And instead, we are left with this second option. There must be fewer receptors, sort of by process of elimination. We do not observe fewer receptors. We don't even really observe that the same amount of neurotransmitter is released. We observe the same ratio. We conclude, because the ratio is the same, we conclude that there's no difference in neurotransmitter release. And therefore, we conclude by sort of process of elimination that there must be fewer receptors there to receive that signal. And that is why our synapse is weaker. Um, if there's a similar question on exam two, in order to get full credit, you have to be explicit about the question, the measurement of ratios of these two pulses, the comparison between wild type and mutant of those ratios, the differences you may or may not get in those ratios, not the difference in size, but the difference of ratio, 
and then how to interpret those differences. The other possible result we could have gotten is that, so again, our wild type is a two millivolt response, and then our second pulse, the wild type gives us a three millivolt response, so our wild type ratio is still 1.5. But the other possibility, this is counterfactual data, um, but our other possibility is that, okay, well maybe the mutant one millivolt response to the first pulse, we already knew that was gonna happen, that's what we saw back here. Um, but now with the second pulse, we get a two millivolt response. So a ratio in our mutant now instead of 1.5, our mutant ratio is two. The mutant ratio is not the same as the wild type. It's greater than the wild type, it's not the same. And so we know that if the ratio changes, that must mean that the presynaptic terminal has changed. In particular, there's sort of more calcium buildup over time and less running out of vesicles, um, which is consistent with less neurotransmitter being released and therefore presynaptic weakening of this response. And so when our ratio changes, um, so, so again, our measurement is the ratios, our comparison is the ratio in wild type versus the ratio in mutants, our um, observation, our result, is that the ratio changes. Our conclusion is first that that means the presynaptic uh, terminal is weakening, and then more broadly that this change that we saw way back here is because of less neurotransmitter release and not fewer um, uh, receptors on the receiving side.